हेलो निर्मा डू यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन हेलो सर यस इन द एक्सरसाइज नंबर फोर यस पार्ट बी कैलकुलेट द वर्क डन बाय द वाटर ऑन द पिस्टन एंड बाय द एटमोस्फियर ऑन द वाटर करेक्ट व्हेन द चैम्बर लेंथ इज इंक्रीज स्लोली फ्रॉम एक्स वन टू एक्स टू यस दैट इन दैट प्रॉब्लम आई थिंक दैट द हाइट एच शुड आल्सो वेरी व्हेन यू इंक्रीज द वाटर लेंथ फ्रॉम एक्स वन टू एक्स टू यू टू एज्यूम दैट द हाइट इज रिड्यूस फ्रॉम एच टू एच एच वन यस दैट इज करेक्ट ओवर टू Yes, that is correct. Uh, the volume is constant, so if uh, x increases, then h decreases appropriately. So you must ensure that the volume is constant. That is correct. Over to you. Next, yes. uh, the work done by water on the piston uh, that will be by uh, as per our calculation, it will be P zero plus rho g h by two into h b multiplied by x two minus x one. Is it correct? Force multiplied by x two minus x one. see you have to be careful here yeah yes you have to be careful here in the sense that as x varies h varies so you have to write h as a function of x so the force is actually a function of x so when you are integrating please substitute h as a function of x and then go ahead and integrate so don't just take the force as constant throughout Over to you. Okay, we have to consider h is a function of x. Yes. Yes. Again, Again it is the same, same thing. thing. The volume, the volume is. Sir, uh, what about the atmosphere uh, work on the water? How to solve it? Correct. So as x changes from x1 to x2, you must say that h changes from h1 to h2, and the force acts downwards, and the displacement is from h1 to h2. so in this case the pressure is the same but you will realize that the top area varies okay and hence the force varies again and force times the displacement force is again a function of x in this case over to you second case sir yes that uh, it will be p0 into the b is remaining constant sir correct the b is remaining constant and the only x is changing x is changing so the force changes because force is pressure Constant. into the area and the x is changing so the yes pressure into area so p0 into b into dx yes so pressure into, into the area dx. the area is just x times b so whatever is the current x is the multiplied by b is the area and you will realize that h is a function of yeah. x again is that yeah. right so as x varies area. the force varies because pressure into the okay. area the area varies so the assumption is that volume is remaining constant yes of course the volume of water is remaining constant sir can you give the final answer for the problem no we will give that later so it is best if all of you do it yourself and submit this and finally we will upload the final answers later Okay if there are no other questions i will uh, go to the next over and out kk wag nasik any questions four yes as the piston moves from x1 to x2 height is decreasing from h1 to h2 the net pressure acting on the piston is changing as a result the uh, formulation uh, becomes little bit difficult so will you elaborate it little bit more as the water pushes the piston the work done would be an integral of f dx so all you have to do is initially you should know that the volume is just b times h1 times x1 and as force has been written as a function of h please write it as a function of x and you will just have to integrate it f dx from x1 to x2 so that is how you will get the work done by the water on the piston so f is continuously a change uh, changing function of x so that is the only thing that is happening and f dx you can just integrate because it's purely an analytical function of x if you want to calculate the force due to the atmosphere on to the water 
you will realize that the pressure is constant, but the top area is changing. Okay. So, actually it will be the force times d h f d h force on the top is p naught times the area on the top. That multiplied by d h would be the work done by the atmosphere on the water. You will have to integrate that. In this case, it is f atmosphere multiplied by d h and d h you will realize that the force is written in terms of x, because the area is in terms of x, it is x multiplied by b. Please convert x in terms of h now, just as in the, in the first part you have converted h in terms of x, please convert x in terms of h now. Is that o okay? Over to you. Okay, over and out. Truba College, Indore, do you have a question? Sir, my question is that the oldest law of thermodynamics is second law of thermodynamics. Then my question is, why it is second law? Why not the first law? And my second question is that a second law violates first law, then why there is existence of first law in thermodynamics? Okay, I think let us put this in, pers uh, okay, sorry, let us put this in perspective. So, what was discussed was when, uh, you know, in question of maybe formulation or thought, maybe the second law was first, because Carnot was thinking about efficiency of the heat engine. Uh, but what really happened was when something had to be put on a firm footing, the first law was put on a firm footing initially, hence that is called the first law. The second law was put on a firm footing later on, hence it is called the second law. And please do not say that the second law violates the first law. The first law just shows you a relationship between delta u, q and w. Second law just tells you what is possible. We are yet to come to the second law, but you will realize it. There is no, no violation of any sort here. You are just putting limits on what can happen. Over. Sir, the oldest law is first law or second law? Over to you, sir. If you want, that, that is exactly what I said. If you want to go along with the thought process of what was thought of initially, then Carnot was thinking of efficiencies of the heat engine. In that case, you can think that someone was trying to formulate the second law much earlier. But when, when it comes to what was put on a firm footing, the first law was put on a firm footing initially, that is why it is the first law. The second law was put on a firmer footing later on, that is why it is the second law. So, if it is it's a question of which was put on a firm footing properly, it is the first law followed by the second law. Over. Thank you. This is, is it okay, Amruta? Amruta Koimbatur? Uh, during the calculation of work done by atmosphere on water, whether we are considering problem number 4, sir. Yes. In the work done calculation by the air or atmosphere on the water, whether we are considering the pressure force, that is the gravitational force, is it possible, sir? Okay. Because uh, we are considering the pressure exerted by the air on the top layer of the water. Correct, that is all. That during is all that pressure we are considering. During the calculations, whether. Okay, that is sir? all you are considering. You are considering the water. Whether we are considering the pressure exerted by the water uh, what you along are the gravitational force. Is it possible? No, no, no. There is, see, there is on top of water, there is atmosphere. You are only considering what is the force, what is the work done by the atmosphere on the water as a system. So, I do not know where the question of gravitational force comes in here. Over. If the pressure exerted by the top layer, hello sir. Yes, go ahead. If force is exerted by the air on the top layer of the water, automatically the force at the bottom layer of the water is also exerted by means of some gravitational force. Is it possible or not? And also self weight of water. Are you done? 
we are considering the work done by the air on to the water as a whole system. So, please do not consider anything which is within the system at all over. If force exerted uh, by the air on the top layer, automatically the inner particles of the water which automatically exerted some pressure at the bottom layer. Okay, as I told you, we are considering the pressure force on top of the water. What happens within the water as a system is not being considered here. Okay, you are only considering work done by the uh, atmospheric pressure on to the water as a system. So, that question of work done by one layer of water on another layer of water does not come into picture here. Over. Okay, okay sir, I accept that. But practically speaking, if a force exerted by the air on the top layer, the inner particles of water automatically exerted some force on the bottom layer. Is it correct or not sir? So, so what, see, and uh, you will notice that I have already said that the two sides do not come into picture. The four surfaces A, B, B, C, C, D and D, A, they essentially define our system. Out of these four, the two active surfaces across which work is being done and which we want to calculate are C, D and A, D. Look at the boundary C D. Because of the pressure acting on it, of course, the pressure starts with P0 here and it will go on increasing. That is the first part of the problem. The pressure goes on increasing and the integrated part will give you a force. Integrate that F with respect to dx and you will get one part of the answer. Now, your question. Amrita Coimbatore. When we are determining the work done by the atmosphere on water, this is the boundary across which the work is done. The pressure P naught will remain uniform, but as the piston moves, the length of A D will go on increasing. Okay. What you are saying is as this goes down, the pressure here will change. Agree. For example, Initially, if this happens to be H1, when this is X1, the pressure here will be P0 plus rho G H1. Later on, when this becomes say H2, pressure here will be now different, it will be lower, it will be P0 plus rho G H2. But this pressure changing has absolutely no effect on the work done across this interface. And in fact, this interface it is the only area which will be changing because of the extension. The force acting may be changing because the pressure is changing, but there is no displacement. So, there is no work done across any of the two boundaries A, B or B, C. And that is why in this uh, exercise, we have been asked to calculate the forks done for work done across C D that is work done by water on piston and the work done by atmosphere on water which is across A D. I hope uh, that makes things clear. Yes sir, yes sir. Thank you, thank you very much sir. Thank you sir. Hello. Yes. Hello, there is one more question. Sir, in the first part uh, of 1.4 A, yeah, you have given a rho g h by 2 for the force calculation. So, this 1 by 2 comes for the position of center of gravity or what? Over. It is up to you how, to you, how you want to do it. You can just take layers uh, of water acting on the piston. At each point, you will see what the pressure is. Multiply that pressure by a differential element of area integrate it and you will get the net force on the You will see that it will be of this kind. So, at any layer, if you if you want to see what is the pressure at any depth, uh, let us say the depth is y from the top, you will see it is just 
rho g y plus t naught is the pressure and that multiplied by the differential area there, we, that would, the differential area would be just dy times t. So, you just integrate from y is equal to 0 to y is equal to h, you will see the force automatically comes out over. Okay, on uh, K J Somaya was not able to contact us on um, video or audio, they have asked us a question on chat. The question is, how do you find d v in problem number 5 to get change in volume in expression for b? Now, if you look at problem 1.5 or you know sorry the work interaction 5, you will notice that there is a, an expression for b which says b is minus v d p by d v at constant temperature. What you must do at this point is that um, you have to integrate p d v and at this point you must get an expression for d v using b is equal to minus v d p by d v at constant t. In this case, you will get that d v would be and in this case you must change volume in terms of mass and density. Mass is obviously a constant in the problem and they have assumed that the density and bulk modulus also remain constant. So, please keep that V by B as a constant. It is a good assumption in this problem. The volume does not change too much. So, you can just as well you know put it as um, uh, mass by uh, rho that would be it. So, you just have to get an expression for d v and integrate p d v over and out. Yes, J and T U. Uh, we have the difficulty in understanding problem number 4, sir. Over to you. Uh, yes. Um, so, in, in problem number 4, uh, what you see is uh, there is water there is water okay on top of it there is atmospheric pressure at pressure p naught and uh, the water is exerting a force f on to the piston the force f can be calculated just by integrating the pressure times d a right from the top to the bottom which part would you did you not understand in this maybe we will focus only on that is it the calculation of uh, the force f or is it what should be the work done by the force f or is it uh, what should be the work done by the pressure p naught if you can clarify that uh, then we can go ahead over uh, you mean the work calculated uh, work done by the pressure p Okay, so, in this case uh, what we have is uh, there is water and there is piston here. There is pressure P naught here. Okay. So, first you need to calculate the force due to the pressure P naught. Okay. That force would be P naught multiplied by the top area you will notice that the top area would be just the depth b multiplied by x. Now, as x varies, the top area varies and hence the force on the top varies. Okay. And the work done by p naught is just integral of f top multiplied by d h. Okay that is the force multiplied by the displacement d h. So, you will realize that the force is a function of x as we have written it because area is a function of x. So, please write x in terms of h now, so that the force becomes in terms of h. So, now you will realize that the force top force is a function of h multiplied by d h integrated from h 1 to h 2 and you should get your work out due to the pressure P naught. Over.
the second part sir the oh. work done by the water on the piston okay the work done by the water on the piston okay so in this case i'll redraw the diagram again okay there is the piston here okay you will first have to calculate this force f that force f the, an expression for it already has been given in terms of h okay so you will realize that if i move if this is the distance x the moment dx a small work i could write it as f times dx you will have to integrate this f times dx so you must write f now in terms of x so please write fh in terms of fx in which means that wherever there is h in the expression you will write, have to write it in terms of x and after you do that you must just integrate f dx from x1 to x2 over thank you sir we'll try it and come back to you sir okay thank you over, over. Ah, uh, YC College, uh, Nagpur. There is no video from your side. Please check. Over. Ah, uh, sir, I am Narendra Giradkar from YCC College, Nagpur. In problem number one point. In problem number one point four, should we not take the pressure P zero on the surface of piston? On the other side of piston. Over. what you are doing is you are calculating the work done by the water uh, on to the piston okay so when it is being mentioned that uh, the th the piston is or the water is being pushed uh, slowly okay it means there is a restraining force which is equal to the force uh, which uh, the piston sees from the water side okay and hence the work done would be f dx and you just have to integrate that so there is no question of what is the force on the other side of the piston at this moment because the restraining force is already assumed to be equal to f here thank you sir okay over and out yes selam do you have a question sir regarding the problem number 1.5 sir the mass is given the pressure change is also given uh so how do the how do i calculate the work done using that uh, the isothermal bulk modulus okay over so if you see uh, the expression given for the isothermal bulk modulus um uh, you will notice okay that uh, b is in terms of v dp by dv please write dv in terms of v b and dp here okay and uh, in this case b is a constant so that is fine what we want you to do is that even volume we want you to write as a constant in terms of the mass and the density in this case dv will now be only a constant multiplied by dp and hence p dv you will realize will be just p times some constant multiplied by dp and p varies from 0 to 1000 bar and hence you can just integrate it very easily over okay over and out thank you yes nepkosh lang shivakashi do you have a question Hello sir, this is Savana from Mepco. Sir, regarding work WI4, that is subdivision B, work done by the water on the piston. We have worked out that solution, but if it, is, it would be better if you provide that end answer, then we could have cross-checked that one. Over to you. Um, as we have mentioned, we'll provide you all the answers later, but not now. So please keep your please uh, carry uh, do the solutions and keep it ready. We'll definitely provide you all the answers. Over. Uh, in the second half today we tried to solve some problems i gave one illustrations um, of uh, wi 3 exercise 3 but then what i generally notice 
is that uh, there are some uh, issues in solving exercise 4 and then something with 5 also. I am not sure whether you have reached 6 and 7. A few things is I get a feeling that uh, many of us are still not in the habit of sketching the system and the process diagram. For example, you take WI 4 again. I think all of you should be able to derive that F formula. But there is an issue here which you would have noticed and that has not been discussed. So, let me bring it up for discussion. First thing is although pressure is involved and the force is involved, there is no d v here. The volume of the, the tank or volume of the basin remains unchanged. So, we have to determine the work done by appropriate force into, let me put a d s, because x means this an appropriate force and an appropriate displacement. When you come to the work interaction between the water and the piston, we have to determine the force, but since the pressure is not uniform and if the pressure is not uniform, remember that this system A, B, C, D which I sketched earlier, you can argue that it is not a thermodynamic system in a state of thermodynamic equilibrium, because the pressure here, pressure here, pressure here is all different. So, I cannot do not have a unique pressure, but we need a force. So, what we do is we consider our system for determination of the force to be stacked up, to be a stack of a number of systems of thin slices like this, go on. And let us say that a particular slice at a distance y from the top and a small thickness d y will have some pressure p and we can neglect the small variation of p across that thickness d y. And then you can determine and say that well that particular small system can be in equilibrium and then by hydrostatic is p naught plus rho g y. And the force acting on the piston because of this d f will be p into b into d y. And now, all that you have to do is substitute equation 1 in equation 2 and then integrate equation 2 from y equal to 0 to y equal to h and then you should get this expression 3. That is one thing. Second thing is because the volume of the basin is constant and the depth or the width perpendicular to the plane of the paper is constant. I can sketch a state space in terms of h and x and you will notice that since the volume is constant at any instant x into x into b is constant and this will be this constant will be the initial height, the initial width and the uh, depth b or 
third dimension b. And since this is going to be a constant, our process is going to be along a rectangular hyperbola, because x b, x h is going to be some x 1, h 1. And let us say, if the initial state is 1 with x 1 and h 1, the final state is 2 with x 2 and h 2. Then as the process goes from x 1 to x 2, h is going to reduce from h 1 to h 2 and the state will go like this. However, do not immediately jump to a conclusion that the area under this curve is going to be some work done, because work done is going to be f d x, say work done by water on piston. And for f substitute from equation 3, you will get an expression containing h and for h substitute from here, that is a representation of this. Wherever you see h in this expression, you will substitute h 1 x 1 by sorry x 1 x 1 by x and then you will have an expression in terms of x and you integrate that out. And the same thing will happen when you do the integration for work being done on uh, water by the air. The next thing was exercise 5. When you read it, well you have a pressure on some block of metal being increased quasi statically and isothermally. So, in W i 5, you have pressure increase that means compression of a metal it is quasi static given, it is isothermal also that is given, we will use it as needed from initial pressure to final pressure P 1 to P 2. It is given that the density and isothermal bulk modulus B. Remain almost constant. Note the word almost. Almost is more important for rho than for B, because if rho were to remain exactly constant, under the influence of any amount of pressure, then the work done will be 0, because you pressurize it to any extent, density is not going to change, the mass of that metal is fixed, so the volume is not going to change and if dv is 0, there is no work done. But notice that there is a bulk modulus 2 into 10 raise to 12 dyne per centimeter square and the definition of the bulk modulus given is minus V partial of pressure with V at constant T, isothermal bulk modulus. And the value is large, 10 raise to 12 dyne per centimeter square. That means that a large amount of pressure produces a small relative change in the volume. In particular, uh, you will notice that a pressure of something like 2 into 10 raise to 12 dyne per centimeter square will be needed for a change in volume of 1 unit. 
that means a 1 percent change in volume will require a pressure change of 2 into 10 raise to 12 dyne per centimeter square. And that means a large amount of pressure will produce a small change in volume and hence on the P V diagram, if you you know for a gas we know that the pressure volume relationship will be something like this. It is not seen there, but I do not want it to be seen. We are comfortable with that rectangular hyperbola thing for the isothermal behavior of an ideal gas. But this is a solid, so the volume does not exactly remain constant. If it were so, the area under this curve is 0. The volume remains almost constant and as the pressure increases, there is a small reduction in volume. And this delta V is related to this pressure or delta P through the bulk modulus. And once you understand this, that once you understand that this is the process, you can say that the area under this curve will be the work done during the process of compression. The pressures are large, they go from 0 bar or almost negligible pressure to 1000 bar. And the formulation is the same, W is going to be integral P d V. Our system diagram would simply be this block of metal, you can show it rectangular, square, cubical, spherical. Hydrostatic pressure from all over. And now this P d V going from the initial state 1 to the final state 2. This you will have to model using this. It is given isothermal, so we do not have to worry, we can use the bulk modulus. Write this as, extend this as B equals V into d P at constant temperature divided by d V at constant temperature, which are the earth. these are differentials. And it is also given that we want work at isothermal conditions, so this everything will be at isothermal conditions. And then replace d V T using this as minus V d P at constant T divided by V. Substitute this here sorry divided by P. Substitute this here and you will find that you will get P d V will becomes minus V by B d P. And now here we assume that V remains almost constant because density is almost constant. B remains almost constant as given. So, you will finally end up with W is integral of minus V by B outside P d P going from the initial state 1, where the pressure is 0 bar to the final state 2, which is the pressure is 1000 bar. Okay. This is the way I would like you to tackle your problems. So, that brings us to the end of our second day. Thank you.